All right, so I want to talk to you guys today about the Tesla Robo Taxi. As you know, we're an automation company and we do automation, right? We do robotic automation, we do all different types of uh, manufacturing type of automation. And this really gives us a good perspective and, and the ability to talk about some of these autonomous things that are coming onto the market. Why? Because some of the programming things that we do align with some of the things that are in things like the Optimus robot or the uh, Robo Taxi. So I'm going pretty heavily in like any extra cash that I have for the most part outside of like our real estate investment stuff that we're doing and what, you know, Elite Automation, Elite Automation's money is its own money, it's a separate thing than my own personal money. But it's gonna be crazy. And, and, I, and I myself am going all in. On, on Tesla. I, I have some other like coin, coin investments and stuff too, but people really, 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 really need to pay attention to Tesla. I think it's going to be one of the biggest companies in the world. And I really want to just make this video as like a prediction, a warning, uh, try to get some other people to jump on board while they have time. Part of the reason why I think this is such a good investment is people are not thinking about Tesla is becoming as, as successful as they are. They're just kind of like brushing things off or, oh yeah, like if they get there, then that'll happen. But I don't think it's a if they get there. I think it's a when they get there for all the things that they're doing. The Tesla Robo Tax is going to be such a big deal. And they're actually doing their Robo Taxi event here in October. So that's going to play a big role in how much the, like the stock price of that company actually jumps. I, however, I think that this event is going to be a pretty big event. And the reason why I think so is because the event was initially slated for August and they pushed it back to October, which tells me that they have some pretty uh, substantial that they want to share in this in this event. And they were concerned that in August, there wasn't going to be enough time to accomplish whatever it is that they wanted to show off, right? Maybe they want to show it off driving around some particular city, maybe San Francisco or community city, city in the world, right? LA, any place. And just showing the, the Tesla driving for X amount of hours on autopilot without any human intervention, you know? Because the thing is, is like the, the autopilot that people are driving around with right now, even people who are driving around with the newest beta version of the software is not the newest version of the software. There's still at least one revision of software out there that are not even in the hands of people. There might even be a couple iterations ahead in revisions of the software that's not even released to the public. Why do they do that? Because they have to do it like that because of safety precautions, have to make sure it's ready. They want to make sure that when they do release different versions, there's big enough leaps in the technology and its performance that it kind of wows the public and it makes people excited and all those things. So they have goals like that, that they're trying to accomplish. But another thing is, is, is safety. And also if they want to try some new technology, a new way that their algorithm processes data, there's probably also revisions that are major revisions that maybe just get thrown in the trash because, you know, they tried to go with some algorithm that, that processes the data in a certain way or AI that processes the data in a certain way, find out, finds out it's not really a good solution and they just can it, right? So there's even, there's even versions like that that we don't even see. There's even plausibilities that there's certain versions that are out that potentially people are running around, running around with different versions that don't know it. Maybe their car says that they're running a certain version, but who, who really knows, right? I would say there might be some liability and legal issues if, they're, if they are giving people different software software versions that are actually running that software version in the car. But then again, it would also be really, really hard for somebody to detect and know. I don't I don't even know if it would be detectable by some outside. And inside Tesla, somebody might know that they're doing that because maybe they want to test different algorithms in the real world to see how well they do, right? And that's why there's like the beta testers. People get the beta and the newest version before some other people and why they, they only release it to a certain amount of people. That's a, a programming thing that they just release that those uh, software updates in, in batches and just make sure it's safe, make sure the technology's ready, make sure the algorithm's performing the way they want, make, just make sure there's not any scenarios of, of any unexpected things uh, occurring due to some new thing in the technology. You know, these are all things that they have to do. Now, going back into that, if this is Robo Taxi Day, that means they're clear, almost 101%. There's about to be another major revision of the software coming out. If I'm not mistaken, I think they're all like 13, but I could be wrong. I don't really pay too close of attention to what software version they're on. I, I just, I really don't care that much because software versions are just like a arbitrary number, right? However, the next version of software, which I believe is going to be 14, is going to be coming out during this RoboTaxi event. And I think it's also going to be able to do something very impactful to the RoboTaxi technology. This might come in different forms. They might take a, a, a an approach that's a little bit different than what everybody's been talking about for such a long time. And what I mean by that, maybe there's certain cities that get it, which that's what all the AI companies or, or, or automotive uh, or autom autonomous driving companies are doing right now. They're all 
they're all like targeting a city, right? Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna be able to perform in San Francisco. We're gonna be able to perform on the certain route. Now, let's say that that's plausible they're gonna do that. I think that, that it's not a, if it's a win thing for that as well. But I think one thing that could occur in between is that, let's say for instance, let's just talk about like LA, right? I really prefer to talk about my city because I know more about it. I can give some more like detail than nobody else will know about it. Uh, but point being is, let's just take this for an example. I'll use my city that I'm from, Evansville, Indiana, and compare that to uh, like LA, right? So LA, let's just say there's 3 million vehicles driving around in LA, Tesla vehicles right, with autonomous driving. And let's say, you know, they've collected some, I'll just say 100 million miles worth of data. I'll just use random numbers. So 100 million or collected 100 million miles of driving data of there in Los, uh, Los Angeles. Let's just, now let's just say you take Evansville, Indiana, and let's say there's a hundred thousand Teslas there and they have, you know, 1 million miles of, uh, of driving data, right? There might be a plausibility that certain cities that have like the millions of miles of driving data that might be able to go full autonomous. And I'm going to break this down even further. This will really show you like some of my thought process in, into how this technology could play out. There could even be particular roads in a particular area, right? I'll break it down to, to, to what the actual thing is. The actual thing is, is how many times has that vehicle driven on that particular road? Not one particular vehicle, but the entire fleet of vehicles, right? So let's just say, for instance, you know, all the Teslas lived in one area, right? And let's say they all traveled to one place to work. Maybe that route where let's say all the Tesla, all the people with Teslas live and that route they all drive to work, that whole entire route could be 100% autonomous. So you could have cars going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? Because that road has the most data, right? It has the most vision data. It has the most, all the data of the car, the steering wheel, right? All these things are data inputs to the vehicle, the encoders in the wheels for GPS, all the different things that, that, that Tesla is using to track the, the vehicle and, and to, to process the, or not to process the data, but to collect the data. The more data that can be collected, now the, the system can be more predictive, can understand what should be there, what shouldn't be there. And a good, and a good example of this is like, is, is to take it into the human mind, right? If you notice, if you ever go to a new city that you've never been in, you have to drive around, it's always really stressful. You're always missing turns. Like, you're just kind of flustered the whole entire time. Why? But it's because you haven't collected enough data. Your mind hasn't inputted enough data to be able to understand your surroundings, right? So say for instance, like I'm here in Saltillo, Mexico, and uh, now I I can get pretty much anywhere in, in Saltillo without a, without GPS, right? But whenever I came here, I, I couldn't get anywhere without GPS, right? I never knew where I was at. I was always lost. So I turned out, if I turned off GPS, I basically went in circles for a super long time until I figured out how to get back to where I was going. But I just, basically like wandered around and figured it out right now i can turn off gps i can take some random roads that i've never been on and still navigate my way to where i'm trying to go with no problem right uh, my sense of direction has been built and so let's say that that sense of direction how is that sense of direction built it was built by traveling on so many roads how then certain roads connect with other roads right but it's all just input of data so one thing like a vehicle automatically potentially have within it is the map is downloaded in it. So it always technically knows where, how to get around an area, right? So how to get around an area is not a problem at all. That's, that's simple as like GPS data. But then as you're traveling around in that area, you know, you're collecting the vision inputs of the cameras to see, you know, what's, what's normally there, what matches for, from like the last time I drove through this area, which, you know, what's changed from the last time I drove in this area, and that can help the, the system make decisions. And then again, they're, they're collecting data from like the steering wheel turns and, and all the different things, how people stop and react and and and, and things like stoplights, right? So like you can visually see the stoplights, but if you're also tracking where the vehicle's at real time, always via GPS, via encoders on the wheels. By the way, an encoder is just a device that kind of counts how many revolutions like something occurs. So it's tracking this data and it notices the human press the brakes every time it comes to a stoplight, right? So now the vehicle can recognize that, hey, I have repeatedly stopped in this area. This must be a light. Also, GPS being there, you can also just be hard coded that this is an intersection, right? There might be a light here. Or if you always see people stop and then go, stop and then go, stop and then go, stop and then go. Now you know you probably have a stop sign, not a stop light. Why? Because people stop and then go, and then they, they went. Meaning they didn't stop and wait, stop and wait, stop and wait. So this data gets collected as people are driving the vehicles. So I think it's highly likely 
that that when they release something even if they don't release it to the full public i think they're going to start releasing to certain cities and also too they're going to have to beta release this even this goes just back into that beta side of things it's like they'll never just release it to all the vehicles in one go they'll have to beta test it to make sure that it's actually going to function well enough and it's highly plausible they're going to launch it in the cities that have the most data and and when i say the cities that have the most data i don't just mean by name and why do i say by name uh, it's because like if you look at, at at LA, I don't know what the the total mile is, square mileage is of LA, but I mean I don't, I don't I really have no clue. But I'm sure it's like ten times the size of like Evansville, Indiana, square footage wise, right? It's gonna be more along the lines of the concentration of the data, meaning in some particular area, how much data do we have of this particular area? Let's just say you have a cluster of roads. And maybe on those clusters of ro cluster of roads, it has 300 million miles driven or something. And it just, into some particular cluster of roads. Let's expand that to a city. So whatever city has the most data or the size of the city, and again, not by name, it could be a smaller city itself that has more data, or it might be a particular area of LA that has more data. It might be East LA. And then now maybe they say, hey, all of East LA uh, has this, this um, autonomous driving capabilities. I don't think they'll do like an East LA because I think they'll, they'll run into issues with like, oh, it was autonomous from like here to here, but it's not autonomous to over there. So they're probably gonna, they are gonna probably call it out by name. Uh, that's why they might choose a smaller city to launch this thing in. You really should should think about, uh, you know, where this technology is gonna go. I mean, it's super powerful. If they, they release this, just the amount of money they're gonna generate. I mean, essentially it's gonna put like companies like Uber out of business. You know, I'm not saying they're gonna go out of business. I think they'll be competitive They'll partner up with different companies and might maybe even partner up with Tesla itself. And, you know, maybe even Uber buys their own fleets of vehicles for operators of the vehicles to buy, buy from Tesla. These are just different alternatives that, uh, uh, you know, that Uber or somebody could do in this space. So yeah, I mean, this is some super, super important to keep in mind. I mean, again, RoboTaxi, this event's coming here in October. They pushed it back from August. Like there's something big going on there. It's crazy. It's crazy. Stay tuned, subscribe, if you want more content like this. Catch y'all in the next one.